Hi everyone. Today's lesson is going to be on sketching quadratic relations from factored form, and it's going to be pretty short, so just bear with me. Okay, so let's say that I gave you a quadratic relation that looked like this. y equals negative x minus 3 x plus 5. Now, <clears throat> one of the things that we've already talked about in the course are the key features of any quadratic relation. And I've summarized them here uh, just so that we have a starting point. So hopefully you'll be able to look at this quadratic relation already and have some idea of some of the key properties. Because it turns out that these key properties are really useful for quickly sketching a quadratic. Okay, well, if you're not sure, let's go down the shopping list, and I'll explain where different things come from. The first thing is the concavity. And the concavity, concavity is either up or down, depending on the sign of the number at the front of the relation. So in this case, since it's negative, that would be concave down, and that's really all we have to say there. Our zeros, looking our uh, Again, we get this looking directly at the uh, relation. Our zeros are going to be um, uh, 3 and negative 5. 3 and negative 5. And again, that's just from inspection of the graph. In the equation of the axis of symmetry, okay, that one comes from taking the average of the zeros. So in this case, the zeros are 3 and negative 5, so the equation of the axis of symmetry is x equals 3 minus 5 divided by 2, which is negative 1 when you work it out. So again, that's going to be the vertical line that cuts the parabola in half. Our vertex is... Um, has its x-coordinate the same as the axis, so we already know half of it, that's negative 1, and the y-value, the y-coordinate, comes from substituting this into this relation. So wherever I see x, I put in a negative 1, there and there. So if I just do that quickly over here, y equals negative, negative 1, oops, minus 3 multiplied by negative 1 plus 5 and if I work that out I get positive 16 okay so my vertex is at 1 16 hmm. okay it's a bit of an awkward number because it's going to be off of my scale, but that's okay. We'll deal with it. Um, <clears throat> the last thing, excuse me, the second last thing is whether we have a max or a minimum. So since our vertex, uh, rather since our concavity is down, since our concavity is down, that means that the y coordinate of the vertex is a maximum. Okay, and again, this is just for knowing the shape. Now, the last thing is the y-intercept. And if you remember, in standard form, we could just read off the y-intercept. In factored form, it's not quite so simple. So, in this case, I'm just going to tell you, I'll, I'll explain where this comes from in a later, in a later, um, uh, in a later lesson. But basically, the y-intercept is equal to a times s, oh, wait a second, sorry, a times negative s times negative r, where negative s and negative r are the zeros of my expression. So I know that looks kind of weird, but if I put it all together, a is negative 1, right, because we've got this negative 1 in front here, negative s is um, negative 3 and oops 
then negative r is positive 5. So if I multiply all that out, I get 15. That's my y-intercept. Okay, so now I'm going to plot this information on my graph as best as I can, keeping in mind that my vertex and, in fact, my y-intercept are going to be off. Um, okay, so I'm just going to take... First, I'm, I, I always start. I always like to start with the vertex, but since it's off the graph, I'm going to start instead with the zeros. So I have one zero here at positive three, and the other here is zero, zero here at negative five, and my vertex is at negative one sixteen. So that's going to be up there somewhere, and really that's all I need. The y-intercept is just a kind of a checking point. The y-intercept would be just over here somewhere. Whoops, a little over there. Okay, but nonetheless, now I have four points, and all I have to do is draw a curve through those points, like so. And oh, that wasn't very good. Let me draw that again. And like so, it still wasn't that great. Anyway, okay, so that's my that's my sketch. Okay, it goes through the zeros. It has to go through the zeros. It has to go through the vertex. It has to go through the y-intercept. Um, although I admit right now. You might be wondering where on earth did this come from. It will make sense. I um, so there we go. Let's try another. Okay, so in this one, um, <clears throat> I uh, I'm uh, I'm going to start off by referring to once again those key properties. In this case, I see the a value is positive, so I am concave up. And um, my zeros are at, excuse me, my zeros are at positive 3 and negative 3. So zeros, positive 3, and negative 3. Okay? My axis of symmetry is x equals 3 minus 3 divided by 2, which is 0. Okay. Um, my vertex is 0. And then if I take 0 and put it back into the equation, I get 0, negative 18. So negative 18 for the y. So this is yet again going to be off my... Uh, off my off my graph. We'll, we'll do the best we can. And the y-intercept actually is the same as the vertex. The y-intercept is negative 18. Okay, so yeah, let's start with my vertex. Unfortunately, I'll put in my zeros. Here we are at negative three and positive three. Uh, my vertex would be zero, negative 18. So it's going to be down there someplace. And I, because the y-intercept is the same, I don't even have a fourth point. But that's okay. I only need three. And I'm just going to go like that. And there's my sketch. Okay, let's try one more. Okay, this one, I'm pretty confident, will actually fit on my axis the way I've chosen it. But let's just be sure. So, again, oops, I start off by looking at the a value. It's positive. It's a, it's a fraction, but that's okay. It's still a positive fraction. So I am concave up. My zeros are uh, positive 2 and negative 4. Okay, my axis is x equals 2 minus 4 divided by 2 work that out and you get negative 1. So my axis is negative 1. And my vertex is negative 1. And if I put negative 1 back into the equation, I get negative 9 halves. Ugh, what a number. All right, so negative 9 halves. And um, what do I have left here? Uh, negative 9 halves. Oh, yeah, since I'm concave up, this has negative 9 halves is a minimum. 
I'll just leave that for Okay, the last thing I want to work out is my y-intercept. So in this case, I'm going to take uh, 0 and put 0 into my relation wherever I see x. So 0 there, 0 there. And work out the multiplication, work out the product rather. So in this case, my y-intercept equals negative uh, 4. Okay. So now I have lots of information and I'll be able to do my graph really easily and it'll even fit on my axis for once. Fantastic. So here we go. I'm going to start with my vertex at negative 1, negative 9 halves, which is right around there. Oh, I think I got that pretty good. Okay, then I'm going to go on to my zeros. And so I have a 0 at 2 and I have another 0 at negative 4 right around there. And I have my winder sip at negative 4, which is a little tricky for me to get. There we go. Pretty good. Okay, so I have four points, and I'm going to join them up as best I can, just like that. Boom! And now my sketch is done. You can see that it passes through the zeros, it passes through the vertex, and it passes through the winder sip. And it's even concave up, which is what I demanded right at the beginning. So everything matches up, and I know I've done it correctly. Okay, so we're going to practice this a bunch in class. So be ready for that. I'll see you in class. Stay awesome.